jealousy, ego, and not knowing what a wolverine is, these actors turned down movie parts for some peculiar reasons. In November of 2021, Fast and Furious veteran Vin Diesel took to Instagram to plead with Dwayne Johnson to participate in the 10th installment of the long-running franchise Fast 10. Johnson had previously stated that he would not be returning, which many believe is due to a feud between the actors that has spanned more than six years and counting. However, Diesel still tried to seemingly guilt-trip the actor in front of his 82 million followers on social media, claiming that his children still refer to Johnson as Uncle Dwayne, and that Johnson's character of Luke Hobbs could never be recast or replaced. Not long afterward, Johnson sat down with CNN and set the record straight. The Rock told the world that he and Diesel had come to an agreement in private. Long story short, the former wrestler would not be returning to the franchise. Your mistake is thinking you've got a goddamn choice, boy. Johnson said that he was very surprised by Diesel's Instagram post, expressing his disappointment in the actor's clear manipulation. He continued, I didn't like that he brought up his children in the post, as well as Paul Walker's death. Leave them out of it. It's safe to say that Diesel's impassioned request didn't make much of a difference in Johnson's decision. Despite his frustration at the very public way that it was handled, Johnson maintains that he will always cheer for the success of the Fast and Furious movies and their cast. A League of Their Own is a fictionalized portrayal of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League and its best team, the Rockford Peaches. Deborah Winger was originally cast in the lead role, and she spent months training with the Chicago Cubs in order to increase her authenticity. However, the moment that Madonna was added to the project, the terms of endearment actress was out the door. Winger believed that rather than A League of Their Own being the historically empowering story it was meant to be, the Queen of Pop's involvement would drive the film in a different direction. She told The Telegraph, I think her acting career has spoken for itself. And what am I supposed to do, huh? Go back to taxi dancing? 10 cents so some slop can sweat gin all over me? Despite the film's eventual positive reception, the actress had a few choice words to say about the final product, like her claim that Madonna lacked the proper preparation. Winger told Vanity Fair, as entertaining as the final film was, you don't walk away going, wow, those women did that. You kind of go, is that true? In 2013, production for the Natalie Portman Western film, Jane Got a Gun, was about to kick off when it hit a major snag. After a three-day standoff over delays and control of the final cut with producer Scott Steindorf, director Lynn Ramsey stepped away from the project the day that production was supposed to begin, leaving a chaotic environment behind. Ramsey's choice to quit the film ultimately led to the departure of cinematographer Darius Kanji and actor Jude Law, who was originally set to play the movie's antagonist. Several unnamed sources claim that Law had admitted to only signing up for the project for the opportunity to work alongside Ramsey, although he hasn't confirmed this himself. Regardless, without her in the director's chair, he seemingly had no interest in continuing with the project. Law was later replaced by Bradley Cooper, who also ended up dropping out due to scheduling conflicts. The movie would finally hit theaters with Ewan McGregor in the villainous role, and Gavin O'Connor in the director's chair. Partially as a result of the casting crew controversy, Jane Got a Gun was a box office flop. Today, it's primarily remembered as a low point for the production company that financed it. Steve McQueen spent the 60s and 70s enjoying the fruits of stardom, appearing as the leading man in countless films that would go on to become classics. Over three decades after his death, McQueen still holds the moniker of the King of Cool, thanks to his long list of interesting hobbies and talents. During casting for the Western classic, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, McQueen accepted the role of Sundance after reading through the script. However, he wound up stepping away from the role over disagreements with his co-star, Paul Newman. McQueen's undeniable star power led him to refuse second billing to another actor, despite the fact that Newman was arguably more famous at the time. The role later went to Robert Redford in what has become one of his career-defining performances. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid went on to garner widespread acclaim, soaring to the top of the charts as the biggest box office draw for two weeks after its release. In 2019, Charlize Theron sat down with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live and discussed the topic of ageism in Hollywood. When Theron was asked by a fan why she reportedly turned down the monumental role of Wonder Woman, the Mad Max Fury Road star set the record straight by sharing the real story. Theron explained that she was discussing possible involvement in the film when someone informed her that she would actually be taking on a supporting role. 
I'm not familiar with it. I don't really know what it, like, I mean, what does Wonder Woman do? And my, this person said, no, it's for Wonder Woman's mom. Theron naturally turned down the role and seems to be able to laugh about it now. She called it a defining moment in her Hollywood career, in which she had crossed over to a completely new category of roles without even realizing it. You might remember Ja Rule from his hip-hop heyday in the 2000s. Or maybe you know him as the co-founder of the disastrous Fire Festival. Regardless, in the summer of 2002, Ja Rule was riding a career high. He was one of the biggest rappers on the planet and secured that year's Billboard Award for Top Rap Album. Ja Rule had a minor part in The Fast and the Furious, the first film in what would become a massive franchise. He was later approached to be upgraded to a starring role for the sequel, Too Fast, Too Furious along with a cozy half-a-million-dollar payday. Surprisingly, the rapper was reluctant to participate in the film. Rule allegedly acted like a bit of a prima donna during the casting process. In 2015, Too Fast director John Singleton explained that the rapper's ego had become inflated. He elaborated, He wouldn't return calls. I went to the studio to go see him. He was kind of playing me to the side, and I was like, what? What is this shit? When talking to MTV about the ordeal, Rule pointed to his desire to make a more serious name for himself in the acting world, saying, I just felt it wasn't the best move for me as far as what I want to do in Hollywood right now. The frustrated director eventually reached out to Ludacris to create a new role in place of Rules, and the rest is history. Brokeback Mountain, the Western romantic drama starring Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, is a beautiful movie, and it's tough to imagine any other actors portraying the cowboy lovers at its center. However, if you ask Mark Wahlberg, he'll tell you that he was considered for one of the starring roles, but wound up turning it down. In a 2007 interview, Wahlberg revealed his reasoning for declining the role, telling Premier Magazine, I read 15 pages of the script and got a little creeped out. It was very graphic, descriptive. The spitting on the hand, getting ready to do the thing, it's just not my deal. Wahlberg may not be the most reliable narrator. After all, he's also claimed that he would have single-handedly stopped 9-11. Perhaps he's telling the truth about having had the opportunity to star in Ang Lee's 2005 classic, but it wouldn't be the first time Wahlberg has exaggerated a little bit during a conversation with the media. Many people point to Marky Mark's strict Catholic beliefs as a possible reason for his discomfort in playing a man attracted to other men. Wahlberg has claimed that being a Catholic is the most important aspect of his life, and his recent pivot to faith-based media like 2022's Father Stu is further evidence of that. The National Enquirer even once reported that Wahlberg's priest, James Flavin, always has the final say in whether or not the actor should accept a role. An unnamed insider shared, Wahlberg never makes a final decision on a starring role until Father Flavin gives his okay. Mark says he owes his career to Father Flavin. It seems that Wahlberg may not have made the right call as far as money is concerned. The legendary performances of Ledger and Gyllenhaal earned Brokeback Mountain three Academy Awards and $178 million at the box office. It's hard to imagine anyone other than Hugh Jackman playing the mutant superhero Wolverine, but Russell Crowe almost took the role for himself. Crowe was the first choice to play Logan in 2000's X-Men, but the legendary actor turned down the role over fears of being typecast. What type was Crow worried about being cast as? Why, a wolf enthusiast, of course. Given that Crow's iconic character of Maximus in the film Gladiator is associated with wolves, the actor was concerned about becoming Hollywood's go-to Mr. Wolf, according to news.com.au. He didn't seem to know or care that wolverines aren't wolves at all. Given the ongoing multi-billion dollar franchise that was born from the first X-Men film, Crow losing out on the role of a lifetime seems like a huge misstep that could have led to years of regret. But in a 2019 interview on The Howard Stern Show, Crow expressed his respect for Jackman's performance and showed that he had no hard feelings. I wouldn't have carried it through with the grace and the, the direction that Hugh gave it. In fact, it was Crow who recommended Jackman, a relatively unknown actor at the time, to replace him in the role. Will Smith has appeared in his fair share of headlines over the years, whether it's the Oscars slap heard round the world or his complicated relationship with his wife Jada. The actor is pretty familiar with being in the spotlight. Back when prepping began for Quentin Tarantino's 2012 film, Django Unchained, Will Smith was offered the opportunity to play the titular character of Django, which would eventually go to Jamie Foxx. 
In 2013, Smith sat down with Entertainment Weekly and explained his choice to turn down the role. His explanation was short and sweet. Django wasn't the lead. In Smith's eyes, King Schultz, the dentist turned bounty hunter played by Christoph Waltz, is the true lead of the film. After all, Schultz gets to kill the bad guy. However, in a much later 2016 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Smith claimed that he turned down the role due to the overwhelming use of violence in the story. He explained, I wanted to make the greatest love story that African Americans had ever seen from American cinema. Essentially, Smith didn't want to have to rely on violence as the answer to racial conflict. 